pretty much everybody's got some sort of idea about prayer in their head. You see that every time there's like a mass shooting or an explosion or a natural disaster. You see social media filling up with posts along the lines of thoughts and prayers for the victims or good wishes, positive thoughts, and it's well intended. But it's all a bit fuzzy, isn't it? And the trouble is, when the pressure really comes, when God is really the only thing standing between you and disaster or serious difficulty, fuzzy thinking like that is just not going to cut it. So we need to understand what prayer is. And one of the biggest questions is, what can I ask God for with reasonable certainty that he'll actually answer? So instinctively, we sort of know it's not just like a, a Christmas wish list that you shove up the chimney. You know, Lord, make me a millionaire without me putting any effort into it we know that that's not going to happen but when you start saying okay but what specifics are there it can all get very vague and I just want to try and clarify that a little bit so let me start with a series of scriptures so Philippians 4 19 my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus so this is a generous God that we're going to be praying to. It's not about what's the bare minimum I can give you just so that you're not dead, but preferably not rich either. That's not the way God thinks. God loves us. God is our father, but he's not stupid either. And he's not going to entrust us with things that we can't handle, is he? So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But have a look at this one. This is Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But with prayers and petitions or supplications and thanksgiving, make your needs known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So this is about peace, isn't it? So the first thing that God is guaranteed to give us is peace despite our circumstances. And there's two things for that reasons for that one is it's just better that we're at peace than not to be at peace but also when we're at peace we think more clearly we can hear him more clearly when we start to panic we start doing all kinds of crazy things so it's a guarantee that as we make known our requests our needs to the Lord he will give us his peace now sometimes I think yeah Lord but can you just get me the next contract don't worry about the peace bit but peace is so essential. It's very hard to have a right relationship with God when we're not operating out of peace because all kinds of crazy thinking comes in. We grasp at straws. We start to strive and try and do things ourselves that really God needs to do for us. So peace is the prime requisite for a successful prayer life in many ways, even though our circumstances may be making us feel anything but peaceful. So, and then let me have a look at John 14, 12 to 14. Let me back up a little bit to verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Or in other words, we're going to carry on where Jesus left off, and that's important. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. Now, some people go crazy on this person and say, see, I can ask whatever I want and it's a guarantee that God's going to do it. I don't think that's what this verse means. Because in verse 12, Jesus is passing the bat on to us. And we know that Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. He was obedient and submissive in all things to God the Father. And then he says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. That's the key. Anything that I can pray legitimately in the name of Jesus is likely to be answered. Because the key outcome there is um, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son at the end of verse 13 there. So if you like, imagine this, I've got a need, okay, and I'm going to do some praying. So I've come to a local church because it's probably a, a local call from here. So imagine I'm, uh, I'm ringing, say 777 it would be, obviously, 777. Yeah, hello, hello, yeah, 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 ah, Peter, yes, yeah, it's Mark, Mark Buchanan here, yeah. Uh, can, I, can I speak to the Father? Yeah, yeah no, I am, I'm having, a, I'm having a great day, thanks. It's probably, probably an American. Ah, Father, yes, um, I've got a list of things that I'd like to ask you for. Um, yeah, so I need some more work, I need more money, I'd like a way bigger house. 
I've just seen a brand new BMW motorbike that I've really got my uh, my eye on. So if you could uh, pop one of those in the post as well, that, that would just be great. Now, I'm being a bit sarcastic and facetious, but isn't a lot of our praying like that? <laughs> but what about the other end of the conversation? What is God the Father doing there? Now, my take on the verses that we've just read is that God the Father will be saying, uh, Jesus, son, uh, have you got a moment? There's uh, Mark Buchanan on the phone, and he says, you said it's okay for him to have some more work, um, a big house, a new motorbike, um, and a bit more financial uh, prosperity. Is that okay with you? Is that the sort of thing you would have ordained for him? It's what can I do in the name of Jesus? So the name of Jesus is not just like a guaranteed rubber stamp we stick on the end of any prayer. It's would Jesus do that? Is that what he's ordained for me? Now bearing in mind, he's not a miser and he's not stingy, but would he do it? And would it glorify him if I answered those prayers? So meeting our daily needs, I've got absolute rock solid confidence that God will do that. And not just at the bare minimum, he's gonna generously meet my daily needs. He does sometimes bless us extraordinarily, completely outrageously for no apparently good reason other than he just loves us. But in terms of a guarantee, how do I know if this is the kind of prayer that God will answer? I would say it's, is it a prayer that Jesus would pray himself on my behalf? And if he would, whether Jesus prays it or I pray it, the Father is gonna to react to it in exactly the same way. If it's something that I want for my own pride, my own ego, my own ease and lack of effort that I have to put in, I think it's probably unlikely that Jesus would pray that for me, so I think it's probably unlikely that God the Father would answer that. Now, even saying that, that a remarkably generous set of criteria, isn't it? And when you look at the people of Israel in the wilderness in the Old Testament, God didn't make them starve. They had manna, they had quail, they thrived in the middle of a desert. So that's not bare minimum thinking from God and it hasn't changed in our day and age either. So God will be generous to us. He will meet our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So when I'm approaching God, one of my first questions is, do I think Jesus would pray this for me? And if he would, then I'm gonna pray that with absolute confidence. And the fact that I'm praying it is me demonstrating my faith in God's word, my acceptance of the verses that I've read out, and I'm joining, collaborating with God in presenting my needs to him in full expectation that he will meet them generously.